What really blew me away is what's happening in the world today is the result of the return of these gods. Now, yes. we were always taught, David, and you can help me understand this, pastor, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we are taught that there is one God and we worship one God. Is that because there are many gods and this God is very jealous and he wants you only to worship him? Or are these false gods? Mm. That is a great question, Julio. And and I think what we have to look at, and I mean, let's go, go right in the Bible says that our, our battle is against the spiritual forces of evil in this dark world. Now, we only, and what you said is absolutely true. We have one God and one God only. But there are a lot of spiritual beings that we don't completely understand that try to set themselves up as gods and try to take that role from our only one true God. Okay. And so when we're thinking about this, we have to realize that when we talk about somebody like Baal, or we talk about someone like Ashtoreth, or, I mean, Baal is the <clears throat> predecessor of Zeus. I mean, his name, in, I think, in Roman or Greek is Baal Zeus. So it's actually part of part of that name. <clears throat> this Baal, now, Baal is, is... Baal, just so I get this right, because his name comes up a lot. He is like the head of all these gods that are returning, correct? Yes. And he, he was is... the first one to come to the West. Yes, he's this powerful God who likes to just bring in the question, is God the only God? Is mm -hmm. he the only God? Is this the only way? Isn't there other possibilities? Can't you, can't you do this and God? I mean, he's asking these syncretistic questions of how do we synchronize what we want with what God wants and brings in this mixed bag of things. Yes. So, so is a very you made something very God. interesting because... The, the theme of this story is at one time, all these gods existed in the eastern part of the world, mm -hmm. uh, but they were cast out by God. And yes. when you cast out demons like he did mm -hmm. uh, with the demons, he cast it out of the um, uh, out of the man he ran on in, into the road. And, and my stories are terrible. But when he ran into him, he cast him out and they asked to be cast into the pigs because they have mm -hmm. to have a host. And then they yes. killed themselves. Uh, the pigs drowned themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, while these gods were cast out, um, they had to find a home and they found it here in America. Uh, I'll let you talk more about that because you had a brilliant way of describing that. Well, the thing, the, the parable that uh, Jonathan Kahn uses in the book is the, the concept of a man has an evil spirit in him, and it's cast out, and it leaves him as it's did. But if the person doesn't replace that, that spirit with anything else, when that spirit comes back after it's gone through all these arid places, it comes back, and he, and he finds the house swept clean and nobody living there, so he goes and finds seven more wicked spirits and comes and lives in that person. And so... So wait a minute, so if you lose one evil spirit, you will gain seven more? Okay, well, not exactly, because the key piece is we didn't replace it. Because the thing wow. is, is when we, when we drive something out, it has to be replaced with something. And if we replace that with God's Holy Spirit, there's no room for that person to come, that, that um, spirit to come back. Uh, so that's how we protect ourselves, is we say, we filled it with God's Holy Spirit, so the other seven of you Take a hike. Correct. <laughs> yeah, when he comes There's back, the house, is full. the house is filled because we're now living in a different way. We're no longer susceptible to that. But this is something we've got to constantly be on our guard against because they, one of the greatest dangers uh, that we face in the Christian life is, is the term passivity. Passivity, a passive mindset and attitude toward the spiritual forces. This is where these so-called gods, spiritual forces shine is when we are passively just going about our business and not paying attention to them that's where they shine what do you mean by that we're not paying attention to them because most people are saying well if i don't pay attention to them they'll go away but you, you have a meaning behind that correct yes because when i when i think about this julia what i what i look at is we have everything our visible our eyes and our our senses can experience I mean, you know, we go outside, it's either warm or cold. I mean, where I'm at right now, it's warm, but it's really windy. You know, we, we look around and, you know, the leaves are budding, things are starting to take shape. You know, those things are happening. We can experience all that. We can smell the rain on the air. We can, you know, we can experience those things. When we talk about the spiritual world, 
all we get is little senses here and there. Some people more uh, in tune with it than others, but you just, you can't really always see what's going on. And so because we can't always see what's going on, it's very easy to lose sight of it, to not engage with it. And even for most Christians, they don't know how to engage with it because they have never been shown a, a pathway to recognize that spiritual warfare that's going on. I mean, okay, you got to talk about procrastination. Okay. There's a, okay. There's two, two types of demon um, involvement in our lives. There's what they call demon possession. That's what we see a lot in scripture. This demon's inside the person and is a, a something that has to be driven out that spirit that has to be driven out. But there's also what they call demon oppression and demon oppression is when the demons are just attacking you like crazy. And one of the biggest, one of the ways that they do that, and I don't want the biggest, but one of the ways they do that is through lack of focus and, um, and, and negative suggestion. Ah, uh, you don't really need to do that. You're not the right guy for that. You don't want to do that, which leads into our procrastination. Mm. So, you know, to, to, so take your, so take your procrastination conversation deeper, you know, this, if from a point that could be just as much the demon spiritual forces trying to keep you from getting things done that you need to be doing. And who would they be in that group of gods? And, and see, this is what we don't know because we don't know all their names. I mean, you, it, it's very fascinating. You, you mentioned the story about D, Jesus d driving the uh, demons into the pigs. That is the only demon Jesus ever asked his name, period. Uh, so the legion of demons that comes out, he says, our, we are legion because for we are many. That's the only one he ever named, which means God, Jesus recognized him as a powerful demon in that area or demon group. So we don't really know all of their names. And I think that's intentional because people who would worship them the same way they worship our God because they're setting themselves up as gods. Okay. So, it, it, so you bring up the oppression, which is, which is demon, which is, yeah, those and people always say, I'm, I fight my demons every day. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now we're fighting the demon across the street. Who's playing his music at the, you know, way above the decibels. Can you hear the booming in the background? You got you got good filters. <laughs> okay, good. Um, anyway, be gone. Hey, uh, <laughs> but here's the thing: yeah. the and this is kind of fascinating. You said that at one point he drove them out, and that was Zeus, Aphrodite, all these people we see as good gods. You know, like oh, the goddess mm -hmm. of love, the goddess of this, the goddess of that. Explain some of those gods because, as you explained mm -hmm. it, is they couldn't find a place in the east anymore, so they found a new home because, like you said, they have to find a new home, and they have mm -hmm. to live in it. So, where did they come to? The West, the United States, and explain how mm -hmm. they're using from what they used to use the old traditional way and how they adapt to the new ways and uh, how they mm -hmm. relate to each other, yeah. with what's happening today. I, I just, there's so many questions I have that I think I'm way ahead of me. Sure. Well, and I think, uh, Julio, I think the first thing I want to do is kind of give a, a parallel because I, um, oh, maybe some of your listeners, and I think we use, I use this with you in uh, um, Orlando, but it, it, maybe you saw that old uh, Robin Williams movie, Jumanji. Where they've got this board game Jumanji, they you know they and the board game sucks them into playing the game, and they're you know all these crazy events happen, and then they finally finish the game, and the movie goes on. Well, that board game is put in a closet and forgotten about until you have the new movie Jumanji come out, and they find the old board game. Well, it's given to a kid who's sitting there playing on his Nintendo, and. The dad gives it to him and says, hey, this could be fun. Why don't you get off your video game and play on the uh, board game? And Jumanji, uh, so he gets to get handed this, gift, this, this game. He throws it up on the shelf and uh, doesn't even look at it. He's playing his game. Well, this book, box all of a sudden pays attention, goes, oh, video games are the new thing. And it turns into a video game. Then the kid looks in the box, says, oh, it's a video game, plugs in his thing. He gets sucked in the same way that Robin Williams was sucked into the old board game. And they've got another story. And the demons do the exact same thing. Because in the ancient world, they shipped by statues being set up to them. They had stories about them. They had all of these incredible things that they were working on. And so, I mean, they were in the public eye. I mean, people knew them. And now in, in parts of the world, these are still true. 
Okay, there are still places in the in the world that recognize all these spirits at different levels. Now, how did how to completely describe them as demons, who they are? And I mean, I don't know how to get into that exactly here. But I mean, there's still places in the world in Africa and Haiti and different places where you talk to a missionary, they'll tell you these things are real. They're alive. They you know, people are affected by them. There's possession. There's um, worship of them. Is that what so they call all those crap? Because in Africa and Haiti and all that, they study a lot of that from voodoo dolls. But it's yes. creepy because people actually uh, say it works. And, and that's scary. There is power. I mean, if you have God, and you I, don't have to be scared. But it, it actually, uh, weird things happen. Absolutely. I mean, this, I mean, we are, we, we live in a very spiritual world. And most of us don't recognize it. Just like this board game. I mean, there's a time when everybody played board games. Now there's a time everybody plays, everybody plays video games. And these so-called gods used to need statues and stuff. Well, they don't care about the statues. They want you to worship them in the new ways. And so they give us the internet. They give us TV shows. They give us other places where the things that they value are highlighted. The music, the, I mean, we could go into so many different places. I mean, where do they show up? Okay, well, we can't get this generation of older people. Let's get the kids. So they show up in curriculum. They show up in books. They show up in novels. And okay, they don't right their so what mentioned. you're talking about is the school system right now, the woke-ism yep. in, in what they're teaching our kids today. Because it did make and, – and this just didn't happen during COVID like people think. This no. was in works for a very long time. But after that, it came on really strong to where – like you said, it's in our, they're going after our kids. So not only on social media, they're using those platforms, but also in what uh, they're teaching inside the classroom. You want to elaborate a little bit more on that? Oh, it, and I mean, we could put probably in the next three hours talking about that, Julio, but I think really what's happening is, and this is, and this is the thing we have to realize. I mean, if you are a person of faith listening to this, this is an attack on who we are worshiping. I mean, this is the, the, the ultimate question is, who are we worshiping? Are we worshiping the true one and only God, the God that's presented and revealed in the Bible, who has made himself known through the person of Jesus Christ? Or are we worshiping something else? And when you worship something else, you start your values change, your morals change, everything changes. And that's what we're seeing in our school system. We're seeing a different deity. And they wouldn't even call that. They wouldn't even like this conversation. Okay. But we, have, but as Christians, we have to talk about it in the way that it's true, and that is that we are dealing with a spiritual battle that our kids are facing every day, and most of them are ill-equipped, if not completely unequipped, to battle it. And so they're just completely indoctrinated into another belief system, into a, another faith system, and they don't even know they're worshiping other gods.